Good morning students and welcome to today's class. So in the last class we completed with the chapter geometry, right? So we completed with the chapter geometry in the last class. Today what we'll do is we'll do a quick revision on what all we have learnt in this chapter. Alright. First of all, we had seen some basics of geometry. What are they? We saw oh, what is a point. A point is something that gives us position and it is represented by a capital letter. And then we saw what is a line segment. What is a line segment? It is a line which has two end points and you can measure its length. Correct? Then we saw what is a ray. Ray is nothing but it is a line segment which has one fixed point and the other end can be extended. Okay, so that is called as a ray. Then we saw what is a line. What is a line? A line is nothing but it is a line segment which has no end points. So you cannot measure uh, and it can be extended on both the sides. So you cannot measure the length of a line nor can you measure the length of a ray. Okay. Then we saw what are the different types of lines. What are the different types of lines? You have straight lines and curved line. What is a straight line? When uh, Then we saw different types of straight lines. So we have horizontal line which is sleeping line, vertical line which is standing line and we also saw a slanting line. Right? Then uh, you all know what are the different shapes. So in today's class we will be learning few more things in geometry first we will see what are parallel lines perpendicular lines intersect intersecting lines okay and so on we'll just revise what all we have learnt in this chapter so parallel lines what are parallel lines lines on a plane that never meet are called as parallel lines so they are always at the same distance apart so these two lines never meet and the distance between the two lines is always the same so example for parallel lines are railway tracks okay then perpendicular lines lines that intersect or cross over at right angles that is at 90 degree angles are called as perpendicular lines okay so two or more lines are said to be parallel if they do not meet okay even if they are extended both ways so here pq and rs form a pair of parallel lines then lines which meet at a point are called as inter intersecting lines so sometimes they meet uh, sometimes they may need to be extended so they can meet or intersect all right so here if you see the third figure they uh, intersect at 90 degrees so they are called as perpendicular lines then we saw what is an angle so what is an angle students an angle is nothing but it is defined as the amount of turn between two straight lines that share a common end point correct so here if you see these are the two straight lines or two rays this is their common end point and what is the angle it is a measure of amount of turn of a line now if this line okay i'll name this line o a okay so imagine that o a is rotating or turning okay and it turns and it stops at this point okay so we'll name this new position of this new line as ob okay so this is ob so the angle formed that between oa and ob that is the amount of turn it took this arc that you can see is called as an angle so angle is measured in degrees and you use a protractor to measure an angle okay so here let's see what they've given you know that an angle is formed when two rays start from the same point. So here ray OP and OQ are starting from the same uh, point O. Okay, forming the angle POQ. So you would name the angle like this. You write this sign, angle sign, and then you write angle POQ. So you write the letter where the angle is formed in middle. So here the angle is formed at O. So the letter O comes in middle okay so here o is the vertex op and oq are the arms of the angle poq all right so the angle is measured by placing the baseline of the protractor on one arm okay why with the center coinciding with the vertex so what you do to measure an angle you'll keep the baseline of your protractor on the 
vertex okay you place it on the vertex so that the center is co uh, coinciding with the vertex so you place the baseline on one arm so that the center coincides with the vertex over here okay then the value along the other arm gives the measure of the angle in degrees all right so the value that this arm points to will give you the angle in degrees okay so if you look at this figure here in figure one angle a o b opens towards the left and angle c o d open towards the right so observe that both the angles a o b and c o d are equal to 60 degrees so as a rule you always need to start counting from zero of this circular scale now if you look here the baseline they have kept on this arm oa and it is coinciding with the vertex o so this is the center line of the protractor or the center of the protractor which is at the point o okay so now this is the second arm ob so ob is at 60 so now since it's opening towards the left you'll use the scale from left to right that is you start from zero from the left hand side so zero is on the outer scale here so if you see it is 60 degrees now same way over here in angle c o d correct so you will keep the baseline on o c the center is at o and you will start reading from zero from right to left so zero here is in the inner scale so as you go counting o d is at pointing at 60 so this angle is also 60 degrees okay now you will have learned about different types of angles correct so what are the different types of angles you have an acute angle what is an acute angle an angle which measures between 0 and 90 degree so which is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree is called as acute angle then right angle what is a right angle it is a angle that measures exactly 90 degree okay so here p o q is a right angle then obtuse angle an angle which is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree is called as an obtuse angle so here angle a b c is an obtuse angle then a straight angle what is a straight angle an angle which measures 180 degrees is called as a straight angle okay then we saw what is a reflex angle what's a reflex angle now here the uh, reflex angle measures less than 360 but more than 180 degrees so the larger angle aob is a reflex angle here then any angle which measure measures zero degrees is known as a zero angle and the angle measuring 360 degrees is called as a complete angle now both zero angle and complete angle are named in the same way okay but whereas the ray remains without rotation for zero angle the ray completes one full rotation and come back comes back to its initial position in the case of a complete angle okay so these were different types of angles all right so then now what we'll do is we'll uh, we learnt what are triangles so let's move on to seeing what are triangles so what are triangles now triangle is it's nothing but it's a closed figure consisting of three line segments which are linked end to end okay so this is how a triangle looks like so it is a three-sided plane closed figure okay then we saw what are the different types of triangle so types of uh, we have two types of triangle one based on the measurement of the length of the side and another kind of triangles which are based on measurement of the angles in a triangle so first we'll see types of triangles based on length of sides so you have three kinds one is scalene one is isosceles and one is equilateral triangle what is a scalene triangle scalene triangles are those triangles in which all the sides are of different length okay none of the sides in the scalene triangle are of the same length okay then coming to isosceles triangle isosceles triangles are triangle in which two of the sides are of the same length okay in isosceles triangle two sides are of the equal length and the third side will be of different length then coming to equilateral triangle so triangles which have all of the sides of the same length are called as equilateral triangle 
so now here isosceles triangle have two angles also equal in equilateral triangle all the angles are equal and they are equal to 60 degrees and in scalene triangle none of the angles are equal okay so scalene triangle as we saw triangles in which none of the sides are of the same length then isosceles triangles where triangles in which two of the sides are of same length correct and then equilateral triangle triangles in which all of the sides are of the same length all right then we saw types of triangles based on measurement of angles so you have acute angle of acute angled triangle obtuse angle triangle and right angled triangle so first what is acute triangle triangle triangles in which all the three angles measures less than 90 degree so you have three angles in the triangle if all the three measure less than 90 degree then they are called as acute angled triangle then obtuse angle triangle so the triangles in which one of the angle is greater than 90 degree is called as an obtuse angle triangle so at least if if one angle is an obtuse angle or greater than 90 degree then it is called as an obtuse angle triangle then right angle triangle triangles in which one angle measures exactly 90 degrees is called as a right angle so acute angled triangle triangles in which all three angles measures less than 90 degree so here if you see the angles are 30 80 and 70 all less than 90 then obtuse angle triangle in which one measures greater than 90 degree so here if you see we have 30 degrees 40 degrees and angle a is 110 degrees and right angle triangle where one angle is 90 degrees okay so some other properties of triangles all the angles in a scalene triangle are different two angles in the isosceles triangle are equal all the angles in an equilateral triangle are equal and they are equal to 60 degrees and all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees okay so these are some properties of triangle okay now uh, we will see what are circles and its different parts okay so uh, in the last class we had done what are circles and its parts so let's study it once again so circles okay where do you see circle in a daily life wheel of your cycles wheel of uh, bikes okay then uh, ashoka chakra on the flag is a circle right then your cd is a circle coins are circles okay where else do you see then in music you have drums and tablas which are circular in shape okay then in sports you see basketball hoops are circles correct and the olympics logos are five circles correct so basically what is a circle a circle is a closed curve in a plane okay so a circle is a closed curved plane so a circle doesn't have any straight lines it has only one curved surface or line okay so a circle can be drawn with the help of a circular object so you can draw a circle with the help of a coin with bangles okay so there are many ways you can draw it then circle and the center of a circle what is the center of a circle it is a uh, in a circle what a circle is a closed curve consisting of all points in a plane okay which are at the same distance from a fixed point inside it so a circle has a fixed point inside it okay from which all the points on the circle are at equal distance so this fixed point is called as center okay so a circle has only one center then radius what is a radius it is a line segment that joins the center of the circle and any point on the circle okay so a line segment that, that joins any point on the circle to its center is called a radius so here om is a radius now radii radii means plural of radius okay so radii of a circle are all equal in length okay so a circle has more than one radius so they are called as radii and you can draw infinite number of radius inside a circle so here they have see they have drawn om on ol and okay so these are all radius of circle and they all will be of the same length
okay then diameter what's a diameter it is a line segment that joins two points on a circle and it passes through the center okay so this is, diameter is joining a and b point a and b on the circle and it passes through the center o correct so it is called as diameter a b okay so again infinite number of diameters can be drawn in a circle now as radii of a circle are all equal in length the diameters are also all equal in length okay so now you have to know that if you look at this figure radius om okay that is this one and radius on okay when you add these two you will get the diameter mn so the length of the diameter circle is twice the length of its radius all right then a chord what is a chord now here you have two points on a circle a and b so when a line segment joins these two points then it is called as a chord okay a line segment that joins any two points in the circle is called as a chord now if you see here diameter is also a chord of the circle all right so chord mn chord kl but the only difference between the other chords and diameter is that the diameter passes through the center of the circle all right so again here in for chords you can draw infinite number of chords and also remember diameter is the longest chord all the other chords will be shorter than the diameter okay so you can draw infinite number of chords in a circle but all of them will not be of the same length all of them will be of different length okay so now we'll see what is an arc what is an arc it is a distance between any two points on the circumference of the circle so the boundary of the circle is called as the circumference of the circle so here this is an arc okay this is uh, the distance between two points on the circumference of the circle that is point k and l so how do you name a circle how do you name an arc your arc is named by three points so you hear them uh, of which two points are the end at the end points of the arc and the third one is in between them okay so you have an arc k x l over here okay we saw what are minor arcs major arcs so an arc divides the smaller arc is a minor arc the larger arc is the major arc okay so examples of an arc is a rainbow a rainbow is an arc okay so semicircle what is a semicircle when you divide a circle into half or if you fold the circle into half you'll get a half circle which is called as a semi circle okay so a semi circle is also an arc of the circle so what all we studied here the center then we saw what is a radius then we saw what is a diameter a line which line segment which joins two points and passes through the center then chord a line segment which joins two points on a circle then an arc and what is a semicircle right so what is a semicircle it is the half of a circle so these are the different points parts of a circle right so that was what we learned in the lesson geometry okay so try to do value based questions and higher order thinking skills based on what you have learned in this chapter okay so if you can't do it then it's all right but uh try to do it for your as a part of your homework all right so in the next class we'll start with a new chapter all right thank you students i'll see you all in the next class